Okay, we're going to do an exercise here to uh, show us how to summarize categorical variables. So as you may recall, categorical variable, this is uh, something that is either nominal variable or ordinal variable. Uh, in this case, we have a data set that consists of um, a sample of grades, letter grades, for students in a first year uh, business statistics course. Uh, why do we want to produce uh, these graphical summaries? Well, look at this data set. What can you tell me about this data set? Thankfully, it's a little bit small. It's just 20 observations. So you might be able to say, well, I see a lot of Bs in that data set. So that's that's useful. What if, what if this data set was 30, 40, 50, 100 observations? It could become increasingly difficult to scan that that data set and extract any real meaningful, useful uh, information from it. So a frequency distribution is really just a way of, of illustrating uh, some patterns or trends or, or interesting things happening within uh, a data set. So we'll start off uh, in this exercise counting how many times do we see each of these letter grades. What's the frequency uh, with which each of these letter grades occurs? So how many A's? How many students received an A? I'm going to cross them off as I go. It's easier for me to keep track. So there's one, two, three students received an A. How many B's? One, two, three, four, five B's. How many C's? One, two, three, four, five. D's, I have one, two, three, four D's. And F's, looks like there's three left. There's, oops, what did I do here? This is a four, and this is a three. So now we've got uh, our counts, we have our frequencies, the number of times each of these observations uh, exists within that data set. How many observations do I have? Well, this adds to looks like 7, 17, and 20. And here I have 20, so I have n equals 20 observations. And we need that now to calculate the relative frequency, our next column. The relative frequency is the frequency or the number of times each each observation occurs within the data set divided by the number of observations in that data set. So the frequency divided by uh, the total. So here this is going to be 3 divided by 20. Uh, so that's 0 0.15. 5 over 20, 0 0.25. This is also 0 0.25. 4 over 20 is 0 0.25 and this is the same as the first, so 0.15. Percent frequency is simply the relative frequency times 100. So this is our 15%, 25%, 25, 20, and 15. So now I can very easily look at this and say, well, 15% of my students uh, received A's. If we go back, let's, let me clean this up and look at that original data set again. It's hard to look at that and say, oh, 15% of those observations are A's, you know, or 25% of those observations are, are B's. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult to just look at that data set and to be able to extract that bit of information. So let's continue now through uh, part B and produce a bar graph. So I'll put my uh, x and my y and my x axes. Our x axes uh, in this case is going to be frequency. This is what I'm going to be illustrating. And my labels along the x axis. I'm going to go in reverse order starting from F, D, C, B, and A. And now we just have to uh, put our vertical bars on there in a relative uh, order or, or approximate size uh, relative to each other. So for the F, I have three students. So let's say this height of this bar corresponds to three students. A D, I have four students. So that one's got to be just slightly taller 
then F. So here's that bar for four students. C, a little bit taller still by about one student. So here's the number of students that received a C. Uh, B, let me find uh, green. This is the same. This is five students again. So that bar is going to be the same size. And finally, A. Uh, what color haven't I used yet here? Orange. A, I have three students. So back down here. Okay, now I've put all of these labels, the, the values on there, three, four, five, five, and three. Those aren't required uh, in, a, in a bar chart. In this case, I find it's just, a, again, a little bit more information uh, so that whoever is looking at this can very easily uh, identify and see the patterns. I can see, okay, most of the students are getting C's and B's by putting those data labels on there. I can say, well, of that sample, 10 of those students uh, received C's and B's. So it's just a little bit more information and it's easy for anybody looking at this to, to be able to extract that, that bit of information from. Okay, and now if we move on to part C, produce a bar graph to illustrate the relative frequencies. All we're doing now is changing the scale on the x-axis. So instead of frequency, now I have relative frequency. I don't have to redraw any of the bars because their size relative to one another is not going to change. So I don't have to redraw the bars, but I do have to change my numbers uh, because of course the scale on the y-axis, now it's no longer a three as I have here, but it's a uh, 0.15 as I have here. So if we add our new data labels, there's 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0.25, 0 0.25, and 0.15 again. So now, again, we've got uh, all of our relative frequencies. This can easily be percent frequencies. This could be 15%, 20%, 25%, 25, and 15. If I were to, instead of relative frequency, have percent frequencies. It's very easy to switch back and forth between these different uh, measures. It's only changing the scale on the y-axis. And again, now it allows me to extract even more information. For example, if I just look at these two columns or these two bars here, 25% of the students have Bs, 15% of them have As. I can say, well, 25 plus 15, this is 40% of my students received a B or an A, right? So it gives more information. It's easier for the reader uh, to digest. Much easier, again, than just looking at this original data set uh, and being able to say, oh yeah, it looks like 40% of the students are getting A's and B's. I certainly can't, uh, can't tell that just by looking at the data set. Um, so producing these uh, graphics make it a lot easier to do. Uh, the last one that we'll do here is uh, the pie chart. I'm going to clear myself a little bit of space to work with. Uh, I don't think we need these formulas anymore. So the pie chart, uh, a way of, of describing data uh, that always will sum to 100. So if I start off with my full pie, you know, 100% of the students received a grade is basically what this pie means. 100% of students have a grade. What share of that pie uh, it goes to A students? What share of the pie goes to B students? What share to C students? Uh, and so on. Now, when I'm producing a pie chart, I like to start with the largest values first. Again, we're not gonna be too picky about how precise uh, these slices of pie are. Uh, so we'll just, kind of use a rule of thumb. Uh, here I have two values that are both 25%. So I know that those two values are going to uh, eat up half of my pie. So there's half of that pie and then here's two 25s. So let's say uh, this corner here, 
let's say this is 25% of my these are all my B students so that's uh, that's this value the next chunk that next big slice of pie another 25% of the pie those are my C students now we go to here I have a 20% uh, I have here a 20% so it's not quite half it's a or half of the half it's not quite 25 percent so i'm going to do something like this and call this 20 percent and that is going to represent my d students so now if what's left uh, is the remaining 30 percent if i split that in half now i have Here's 15% for my A students. And finally, 15% for my F students. Okay, so there we have uh, another way of depicting uh, this data in terms of uh, percent frequency. Again, it's easy to look at and I can extract all kinds of information from this. Half of the students got B's and C's. 20% you know, of them received D's. Uh, it's just much, much, much he more helpful and more informative, again, than just staring at this table of letter grades and trying to figure out uh, what's going on. Okay, so hopefully this helps uh, produce, helps you produce these frequency distribution bar charts and, uh, and pie charts. Okay, thank you for watching.